My name is John Cronin. I'm Senior Fellow for Environmental Affairs at Pace University. Uh, I, I grew up in Yonkers, New York, a city by the Hudson River. And there were two, in 1950, I was born, and there were two things that uh, kids my age knew about the Hudson River. One was the good Lord put it there to separate New York and New Jersey. Uh, the second was that it was the dirtiest river in the world. Uh, too dirty for fishing, too very dirty for swimming. Very different than my family's river. My father learned how to swim on the river. My grandfather was a fisherman on the Hudson River. Uh, when I was 23, I had a chance meeting with folk singer Pete Seeger, who took me under his wing. We worked on a volunteer project together. And he said to me, you know, John, if we all work together, we can change the Hudson River. And uh, I said, Pete, you're crazy. It's just too big a job, it's not possible. I, uh, he hoodwinked me into volunteering. And for the next 38 years, the, the Hudson River and water issues generally became my life's work. And now it's 2011. And what was once the dirtiest river in the world, according to our reckoning, is now one of the great environmental success stories of the world, uh, in part because of the thousands of people, in great part the thousands of people that Pete inspired. And uh, over the course of those years, there's a few lessons I've had a chance to learn. Uh, and I, I've been intimately involved in the Hudson. I was even a commercial fisherman there for a while until I decided there were easier ways to go broke. Uh, and I was the Hudson River Keeper for 17 years, the first river keeper in the country. There's now 160 keepers around the world. And I look back on those 38 years, and a few things are very obvious to me. One is that unless things change, things don't change. Uh, the second is I and all of us here uh, stand on the shoulders of giants somewhere in, in our lives. And the final one was that Pete was right. Uh, it sounded like a sweet old homily, but if we all work together, uh, not only can we change a river, if we all work together, we can actually change the entire world. And I think that's the spirit of the, the Jefferson Awards and the reason we're all here tonight. So thank you very much for your attention. Benjamin Franklin once said, when the well is dry, we know the worth of water. Our second champion recipient knows the worth of water well because he has dedicated his career to water and environmental affairs. Described as hero for the planet and equal parts detective, scientist, and public advocate his efforts have inspired a legacy of programs across the globe, fighting pollution on six continents. This year, the Jefferson Awards is proud to present a Champion Award for Outstanding Service by an Employee to John Cronin of Pace University. For nearly 40 years, John Cronin has been dedicating his career to environmental public service. And what a career it's been. Starting in 1973, when he joined the fight to clean up the Hudson River, at the time one of the nation's most polluted waterways. His work on the Hudson resulted in the very first enforcement of the Federal Clean Water Act in New York State. And that was just the beginning. He went on to author laws preserving Hudson shorelands, fisheries, and commercial fishing families. No wonder that in 1983, he was appointed Hudson River Keeper. Working with government agencies, experts, and the courts, he helped solve problems of environmental abuse on the Hudson and became pivotal in the river's massive cleanup. Inspired by his success, Cronin went on to help launch similar keeper programs to help protect precious bodies of water around the country. Today, there are nearly 200 keeper programs on six continents. And still, he was far from finished. In 2000, just after being named a Time Magazine Hero of the Planet, he became founding director of Pace Academy for the Environment, where his remarkable leadership in environmental education 
advocacy and innovation, especially on national and global water issues, has reached new heights. For his countless volunteer efforts and achievements, the Jefferson Awards is proud to salute John Cronin. First, I, I want to, on behalf of myself and Pace University, congratulate all of last night's recipients and all of this evening's awardees. I am honored to be in your company. Uh, it's truly inspirational evening, and I thank you all for, for being alive. Um, I also want to thank Pace University, which has provided me an extraordinary environment uh, in which to work. Uh, they believe in the maximum by Ernest Boyer, who was a great Secretary of Education, who said, to be truly human, one must serve. And that is a credo at Pace University. And their expansiveness in giving me a, uh, a uh, social promotion from high school and a failure at college, the opportunity to be a senior fellow for environmental affairs is, a, uh, is an extraordinary uh, testimony to how they look at the world. Um, and also, I, I want to thank uh, my wife, Constance, who's over at Table 19. Uh, anybody here who has done advocacy and activism knows that uh, as difficult as it is sometimes, it is far more difficult to be the spouse of an activist than it is to be an activist. So, Connie, thank you. I love you very much. I, I was telling some of the recipients last night that uh, you know, I was born in Yonkers, New York, a city on the Hudson, and there was only two things we knew about the Hudson River growing up in the 1950s. One was that the, the good Lord created the Hudson River to separate New York and New Jersey. Uh, the second was that the, the river was just too dirty to do anything, and in fact was probably one of the world's dirtiest rivers. It's not a pleasant legacy to grow up next to, and I, I've been very fortunate to uh, be part of the effort of thousands of people over a 38-year career who have, who have turned the river into an environmental success story and, a, and an example for the rest of the world. And it's a story I love telling school children in particular. Uh, and recently, uh, I was with a group of third graders, and one of them asked me, what was my favorite species on the Hudson River? And this is a, I, I had to think about it on the spot, and boy, there's a lot to go through. You know, bald eagles, America's great symbol, what a, uh, are coming back to the Hudson River because we've successfully fought pollution and because of the banning of DDTs. Uh, the blue crab, an extraordinary animal, clatters around on your boat like a clumsy little thing. You drop it in the water, and it does this beautiful side stroke with all of its legs. As a matter of fact, its proper name, Kalanectes sapida, means beautiful swimmer. Um, the Atlantic sturgeon, 200 million years old. The biggest one ever caught on the Hudson was 11 and a half feet. Imagine a species living for 200 million years. We should be so lucky. Uh, and it calls its home the Hudson River. But you know what my favorite species is? My favorite Hudson River species? It's the human. There is no species more interesting. There's no species more fascinating. There's no species more inspirational uh, than the human. And I'm asked often, Am I optimistic about the future? And the environment's a dirty business. Um, three children in the developing world die every minute from diseases due to water pollution. In the next year, 19 million of us in the United States will get ill from water. Uh, the 1972 Clean Water Act said that was all supposed to end in 1985. So it's hard to be optimistic, but I am. And you know why I'm optimistic? I'm optimistic because of who we are. We're the only species on the planet who will run into a burning fire to save a perfect stranger. We're the only species on the planet that will organize our community to save a community on the other part of the world that we may never even visit. We're the only species that will make sacrifices to save another species. 
this makes us special. This makes us unique. And every one of us who have a chance, the privilege to do public service, we get to do the thing that we've found we like. But you know what's underneath all that? What's underneath all that is the genetic code and every human being that says we are here to help each other. We are here to serve each other. We are built that way. We are coded that way. And so when I'm asked by those kids, what's our mission for the coming years? I always answer the same thing. It's the duty of all of us to bring out the best in each of us. And it's in that spirit that I accept this award. Thank you very, very much. I was, I was, especially after listening to everybody's stories for two days. I was uh, uh, humbled by everybody's stories before my name was announced and uh, more so after my name was announced. You know, I grew up along the Hudson River, uh, a dirty river internationally thought of as just a big, bad, smelly joke. Uh, and as a city boy, I really had no interaction with the river different than my parents' generation. My father learned how to swim on the Hudson. My grandfather was a fisherman on the Hudson River. I was the first generation that grew up separate from it. And then in 1973, I had a chance meeting with uh, folk singer Pete Seeger. Uh, we ended up working on the same volunteer project. I was a roofer at the time. I had a lot of hammers and nails and they were repairing a dock and I volunteered. And uh, he said, um, we ended up working by ourselves together, just the two of us, and he said, you know, John, if we all work together, we can clean up the Hudson River. And I thought, you know, this man is out of his mind. It's just not possible. And uh, he goaded me into volunteering for an organization called Clearwater that he had organized. And I started asking the question, what happened to my family's river? You know, it started out personal. What happened to my family's river? Why didn't I learn how to swim in the Hudson? Why wasn't I a fisherman? And, uh, and that passion from Pete infected me and started making me look at the river in a very different way. I volunteered and the volunteer work turned into a life's work. Uh, and 38 years later, I spent my life not only on the Hudson River, but on waterways all over the country. And uh, I, I've, I'd like to think I made a difference, but I think the most important contribution I've been able to make is to help others make a difference because you need an army. Uh, one person can't clean up a river. Uh, you need an army to clean up a river. And uh, I'm fortunate that at well, I'll be 61 and uh, I've gotten to see the Hudson River improve in my lifetime. And uh, you know, I can go to, grave a, go to the grave a happy man with that. Pace University believes in public service by its faculty by its students. Uh, its slogan is opportunitas. Uh, and what they mean by opportunitas, by opportunity, is not just opportunity for yourself in the marketplace within education. They mean the opportunity to serve, the opportunity to be something in the community. Uh, Ernest Boyer, who was a great educator and a former secretary of education, said that to be truly human, one must serve and he believed that that was the role of students and faculty throughout all schools. And Pace has wrapped its arm around that and really made it a credo. And the, the faculty have embraced it, the students have embraced it. Uh, I've worked with students who, uh, my students, my students uh, wrote the law, lobbied it successfully, did all the research that made the Hudson River a no discharge zone for vessels from sport boats to oil tankers. They did it all by themselves. Uh, I got them going, but boy, they took it and ran with it. And for Pace University, that was what a class should do. So uh, I'm, external, I'm, I'm just extraordinarily grateful to the opportunity that Pace has given me.